like to call this meeting of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board Order of June 13, 2022. Can we please have the roll call? Ms. Erin Angel? Here. Mr. Scott Connell? Here. Mr. Jeff Allenbogen? Here. Mr. Manil Kangwall? Ms. Paige Lewis? Here. Mr. Nicholas Novella? Mr. Dan Olson? Here. And Mr. Tim Waters is not here. Great, thank you. So we'll move to the agenda. Does anyone have any additions to the agenda? Yes, um, I would <laughs> like to propose that we add a discussion about a field trip to the agenda. Oh, under a new business. Under a new business, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any discussion on that? Any other additions to the agenda? If not, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I move to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, we'll move on to the minutes. Maybe just this morning, but did anyone have a chance to review them fully and did you have any changes? Reading them now is the time. It came yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I didn't see it until this morning. Oh. Uh, okay, so we need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the May 9th parts of the measure for minutes. Second. All those in favor? Great, thank you. Okay, assuming we don't have any public invited to be heard, right? Nobody? Nope. You can make comments if you want. Yeah, not here. <laughs> Great. Okay, we'll move on to your whole business. So, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you all had heard about the proposal from that the city manager presented to council about a quality of life tax. Has everybody heard about it? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that should be nobody. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, at yeah. the meeting, it was towards the middle of May, he presented this info. And what what he is has talked to council about, and council is, um, at least without voting, showing some interest in trying to go to a quality of life tax that would provide support to the library, recreation, museum, parks, and the performing arts center. And the thought is, is that all of these, these areas need additional operating funds as well as some additional space. The museum has a plan that would add square footage to the existing museum. The library is uh, partway through of a feasibility study. That study has identified that there should maybe be two or three branch libraries along with the central library. We all have talked about a, a new recreation facility. <coughs> Parks um, needs operational dollars as well as some support to move projects up on the list instead of all of us being told three to five years before something's done that maybe, <laughs> just seeing if you're listening over there, David. <laughs> to possibly move those up uh, sooner. And then some form of funding also for uh, the proposed performing arts facility. This, this is another, basically it provide both dollars to build these facilities, to add on to the facilities, and operational dollars. Um, and then of course with recreation and the museum, the potential to bring in additional revenue into the city. So funding options, and, and of course, not doing any more is, is always an option, or even reducing services. That's something that um, is always a possibility, but certainly not why we want to try to move forward with a, a tax. 
Um, the tax will be dedicated for those areas that we just talked about. Um, or another option would be to create a district that would possibly encumber all of those, or encompass all of those areas. Part of what's going on with the library feasibility study is there also is a group interested in the library not providing services through the city anymore, but creating a separate district that would uh, offer library services. A general tax could be used anywhere in, in the city, really. or if it's dedicated to those areas, it could only be used for those five uh, museum, library, recreation, parks. Yes, Jim. Did they say this was like a mill levy tax on property or more like a sales tax or another tax on uh, I, I believe they've talked about property tax, but, but this is very early on. And so it really is just in the discussion, early discussion stage right now. They didn't talk about how much of a tax or is that no, because we don't we don't know the numbers of what it would cost to do all those things yet. Staff are meeting monthly to start developing those costs. Does um, that the green facility is funded in this way or through like a bond? So like the recreation center museum was through a bond or like that's you sales, sales tax. tax. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure the city can do property tax, can it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. They, you pay property tax to the city right now. Mm -hmm. I thought it was school districts. Gotcha. But schools you yeah. to the school district right. too, yeah. But uh, it would expand the levels of service, maintain services in economic downturns. And this election would take place in November of 23. So we have some time to develop uh, what the cost really would be and if it's realistic to ask for that kind of a tax, meaning how much it is. Does that mean a vote on the tax or does that mean a vote on all the things we'd like to do if the tax is it all in one? It would be, be all in one, is the belief right now that you would vote for the tax that would make all those things happen, including building the rest. Yes. Well, yeah. if we get our ducks in a row. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But again, it's November of next year. So. Which is kind of what we had discussed as a rec center. Yeah. Time mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. So are you still, I know last time we talked, there was a funding item for the feasibility study that was going to be considered. Is that still? It's, yeah, it, it hasn't been, it hasn't gone to council yet. I thought it would be done by now, but it hasn't. As soon as that is completed, we will then go to an RFP to hire a consultant. Do we need to step up there and make that happen for council? You said it hadn't gone to council. No, it's, it's in finance, and finance deals with that. Ah. They're closing out all the books for 2022, so they can't do the appropriation until that's done. They're, they're at the very end of that. So, possible uh, community involvement, uh, identifying projects and costs, operational needs. Uh, we want to make sure that the, the community is involved along the way so that they know what we're proposing, have a say in what we're proposing, and hopefully that would encourage them also to vote for it. And then uh, there'll be some later in the year more of a formal direction from council about uh, how we move forward and then i think they have to put it on the ballot by august of 23 for it to be in november which is the only time the city can, can do this kind of uh, election that's does anybody have some like this yeah i think fort collins is a good example of, okay. of this type of tax When does the sunset on the current rec center museum senior center go run out? It, it, it already has. It did. It did in 2018. Okay. 2018, the voters continued those those dollars to be used for civic center, oh, that's right. fire stations, and some golf projects. That's right. And that's a sales tax. Yes. Right. 
extension of what people were paying for the Decision 99, which is Museum and Rec Center and Roosevelt Park. Right. So again, very early stages, and we'll keep you informed. Um, I'm sure that at some point in time, we'll be bringing the different uh, advisory boards together to get everybody's input and uh, their thoughts on, on moving forward. David, do you have anything you would add? No. That's good. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, early, early on. Are you, are you <laughs> nervous that it's just a big hump of yeah. everything? I mean, especially the performing arts center that yeah, you might have vote on it's, by itself. Yeah. So. Right. And it's my understanding that the performing arts, there, there's another study going a little bit deeper than the first study to really identify that private public partnership. I think it was 158 million or something for the first one. Um, but again, we're so early on, I don't know what the number is. But the, the challenge is whoever goes first may get funded, but, or people might say, well, I'm not going to vote for the library because I want a rec center. Or I want the, so coming all together, we feel like it offers something for everybody. Yeah, I, I guess my knee jerk reaction feels like competitive by stock, right? A little bit. The Forming Arts Center is a giant. Right. Compared to the other ones, and I, so and I would agree. It's uh, it's something that hasn't been really sussed out in public, right. and so it's something that could kill everything else yes. because it's 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 own standalone liability yeah. that looks different than you know, it's different. Yep, so I I would agree, but again, it's it's very early. On. I'm, you know, so what? I mean, is this going to be? What what is the path for continuing to discuss this? <clears throat> I mean, for the council, and if we wanted to provide feedback to the council, I mean, it's too bad that Tim's not here tonight. But. Right. But, and we can talk about it again next month when Tim is here. I don't have the answer for that. You know. Staff is meeting and, and talking about what, what would we would identify, and, and my guess is that then it starts going out to um, boards and, and to the public to start getting the comment of, are you guys crazy, or no, I like the idea. Yeah, it'd be great to do some really robust early polling. Yeah. All right, that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. for the change in park hours in the neighborhood parks, the shelter reservations, and the definition of camping. I think we went through those all as a group pretty well, um, but that really went into effect on June 4th, and it was kind of a scramble because we didn't, you know, we had to wait for council to give us direction to do that. So we got that done, and staff that went out and had to, we had actually got out already looked how many signs it would take to um, change out, and I think it, remember we had a number that we changed all the signs and pay seventy five thousand dollars. We actually went with the fact that we know we have new branding coming up in the future and there will be new signs. So in the interim, basically doing vinyl text to go over the old language for the park hours and put that up onto the sign. So it's taken a little bit of work that after we got that figured out. Because when you think of all the years of signs, I think we have twelve different fonts, twelve different <laughs> sizes of characters. So we've been trying to match that. I think we're at the point now with the Individuals who are working in those parks now are going to have those stickers and take them out and get them up on the sign. So, even though it went into effect on the 4th, the goal for PD and I'll play for the Rangers in particular is not to be out there writing people tickets for violations of rules and rights. It really is a really to start the conversation and talk to people about why we're trying to make our parks a little safer by keeping people to use them in the most effective way possible for those lighted areas and after those hours, after the one hour darkness that. Um, 
it really is contributing some of those behaviors in the car. So at this point, I've had no rangers come back and say they've even had that conversation with anyone yet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So if you want to take these one at a time and ask questions about that, if you have neighborhood parks and you've either seen the stickers go up yet or you haven't, or you've seen, seen or heard feedback from your community about how this is really impacting the, the use of those parks. I haven't noticed it yet that okay. part, but maybe I just need to do my part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to, but okay, so the uh, Friday night, I got all told to stay in the TVs at the museum so they didn't get vandalized and didn't sleep very well. And uh, wake up and lo and behold, there's some kids that were like jump over the fence and investigating the TVs. It was totally like that. And it like it's two o'clock in the morning and running around about vandalizing. But then I'm like, these are really cool. Hey, let's go to the park and swing on the swings. So that's my info. It's what teenagers want to do. It's at 2 a.m. going swing on the swings, and I'm all for it. So. And I, I, just, just to kind of reiterate the, the fact that, you know, even before this change, that would have been against rules and rights. I, again, I think most of our PD and Rangers and stuff that would be up there in the morning, it really is going to be if there's something happening that looks like they're up just swinging with alcohol in their hand or spray paint, you know, it's the ability to talk to people. And if they, someone drives by in the morning and sees someone or an office or after sunset, it would be the ability to contact those people and, and make sure that what their intent was was really something that we hope is not going to do damage to our system. I just hope it doesn't disproportionately affect people of color or uh, minority status or different age when, uh, because if they saw me not sitting on these names, I doubt anybody would say anything. But it's, yeah. So we will, we can definitely, age is a tough thing, you know, because I do, I definitely have my rangers keep, keep track and stats of how many contacts they made for a dog off leash or after hours or alcohol violations, if it was a verbal warning, if it was a written warning, if it was a citation. So we, we have some of that information, but again, um, unless it's a citation, I'm not going to be asking people their, their, their agents out there. So um, there'll probably be some conversations we have if I start seeing certain parts with certain numbers of contacts that are disproportionate to other areas. Um, we can definitely start talking about breaking the chunks. Is this looking like something happening in a certain demographic? At this point, it's really enough that we can definitely improve those conversations. Could we have a just an update at the end of the summer on the implementation? Yes. Yep. Just what you encountered, I think that would be great to see them The next one was the camping piece, and that one really, we had no signs in our neighborhood parks that said no camping. Because right now, it's really what we have. We have a, a sign that says no after hours camping in some of our other parks. Um, as we went through the inventory, there's nothing that said that there. So right now, it would just be, as of right now, people have to kind of know the rules and rights. And again, it's the, the idea of what we're seeing out there that would have a negative impact on the system. So we, we again, would be having these conversations. So if people are out there and they're using the park, and looks like they're setting up to, to kind of move in. Uh, the rangers have been trained as part of the training. The first thing you're doing is asking to see if people need services, where they can get that help. And then they give them that time, even if even it is over two hours, they're going to give them that one, so you have 24 hours to either move on or try to take some of those services. So again, um, we have not seen that in the neighborhood parks this time. Some of the questions did come up again about um, if it was being used for youth sports and stuff, and people have been the shade tents up. And I think Jeff has talked about the fact that those typically don't have a lease on them for some of those, or a rental agreement, but uh, or the contact person won't be there. Most of those are done within two hours. So we haven't seen any of those challenges yet uh, either in any of the parks. And then the last one is the shelter reservations. And that was really the same that if you're going to have more than 15 people or it can be the more than two hours, you need to have that reservation. Um, the same way you would need if you wanted to have first priority at it now, you just think you need to make sure you get that, that reservation. And Jeff, I don't know if you've seen any reservations coming in. The recreation does uh, our, our park reservations for the city. The parks and the park staff are out there and put the reservation sign up saying that this shelter is reserved for this group at this time. So that way, if some are using it, you have the ability to ask them to leave uh, because you do have the priority. 
haven't seen any impact. Those are paid or, or, or those are paid. And uh, well, a lot of that for graduation weekend, but that's before yeah. the regulations. Is that so it's harder. I think most of those are several. Yeah. It, every, but prior to COVID, we, we had around 1,500 shelter reservations in a year. We're heading back into that direction. And Jeff, do you know offhand, I, I have looked up at the net of council what the reservation prices are. 65. 65. And um, council member of the Dabo Fairing was the one that was kind of concerned about that impact. And having her come from California, um, she was kind of shocked at how low that price really was to be able to take a shelter for the, the whole day. It's more than two hours of the whole day. I think you can have you know, that for that time. Just to clarify, you're saying the whole day is 65, I thought you were saying two hours is 65. If you go more than, if you, you need to have a reservation, it's more than two hours. If you have a graduation, and it's only one hour, but you want to guarantee you have it for that yeah, hour, it's good. the same piece. You need that reservation, and that reservation really does give it to you for the whole day, but I'm not sure if you can put a time slot in, because I know we do get multiple reservations in one day for one shelter. Sandstone has a, has a different hour. Yeah, it's an hour. Yeah, the, yeah, the the group shelter that that's a bigger pavilion, so that is an hourly rate for that. I'm looking right now; it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. for all of them. Right. And and it we don't usually do multiple because it's too difficult to clean up in right. between the rentals. So what I probably kind of heard right now is um, as we're going through the season, kind of looking for the things that you know that equity lens is how this is impacting the community and also being ready to give a um, update at the end of the year and how this really was used throughout our education, our enforcement, and our ability to help manage our parks to, to be for the, the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be great to just have an overview and hear what right. worked well and if there were any challenges. Right. Yes, there should be just dismissing previous problems. Right. And again, that's one of the reasons that I think, you know, that as they looked at doing this citywide, I think Carol and, and the group that really wasn't leading this neighborhood impact team looked at it, if we did displace, we would have to go and change hours there and try to address it there. This way, it really is hopefully citywide we can address it as, it, as that happens. We, we are working with those individuals. Uh, the water's seat right here. He's over there. Oh, he's here right now. You're in the next seat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just curious if now I'm looking and I'm just wondering, I see a bunch of fields on here and it says you can reserve fields for an hour at a time. Is that, so I don't know why that's it. If you try to do it, it says in, in Korea only reservations cannot be made online. So like, do people constantly call up and say, I want a baseball? I guess it's not called a field, but it's a baseball pitch. It's a baseball pitch. Are you? I'm just seeing on this website, it's not just shelters. You can book all sorts of other amenities at the parks. Yeah, you can't do field reservations because we have so many user groups that you have to talk directly with our athletic staff to reserve those. Okay, so they're listed here, but they're not actually reservable here. Not, not online. Okay. Are the fees ever waived? No. I don't have that authority to do that. And there's no scholarship program or anything like that. I mean, for oh, like no grant program or anything. That, I just I don't know. Somebody from California is saying sixty five dollars isn't much, but somebody from my neighborhood, including me, I would not have been able to. Sixty five dollars would be the entire budget for my kid's birthday party, including his present. So that would. It would put those people in the case of just trying to get it and right. yeah. hope they leave at one hour fifty nine minutes. I agree with you. Yeah, the people that the people that have the money for that are, are going to, you know, the jumping place or whatever. Um, you know, yeah. I, I think I think sixty five dollars is a lot. I think fifteen dollars is not right. And again, the see is trying to hit that compromise because Part of what that really does is it does include, as Jeff talked about, if you have the reservation on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, it really is staff coming in, cleaning those, changing trash, getting restaurants ready, and, and that 65 is going to be close to coming to this cost. So there's a, the city is trying to strike a balance between making it you know, equitable for the community, but also trying to cover some of those costs. Any 
any other questions, questions before we move on to new business? Thank you. Welcome, Councilman Waters. Thank you. I apologize. Somehow, I'm more focused on tomorrow night, I guess, than tonight. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. New business, sir? Yep. I think the new business end is the Indian SFP and St. Brain um, Forest Health Partnership. And I'm not sure who all has heard about this partnership. Um, I think your chair is the one that saw some of the information out there, either online or hard copies of what um, some of the tours are up around the Button Rock area, really up in what um, we're looking at as a forest, you know, this forest shed that really, fire shed that um, doesn't have really clear jurisdictional lines. Fires don't respect those anymore than wildlife or water does. So we've been working since 2019 is when council really directed us to see how we can do a better job working um, cross boundary across our four boundaries to try to help preserve um, our watershed. It's one of those pieces that sometimes people don't get that connection to forest health and water health. And it's something that a lot of different communities are working on. I think Denver's calling it forest, forest faucet, um, looking at how they manage their watersheds to get that connection of if we have a devastating wildfire um, up in our watershed around Button Rock, what well, that impact really could be in our drinking water rate in Long Rock. Button Rock is a significantly challenging place for forestry because of the topography up there and how long it's been since we've done some good forest work up there. So in 2019, we were directed to do this. We were able to work with the St. Brain Left Hand Water Conservancy District and um, some of those individuals there who are using the water health and then work with them to really build off of what was already in place as far as it was known in Colorado, Colorado Fire Shed Collaborative, which is more of a regional piece. There was the Boulder County Fire Shed. And then out of that, we built the St. Brain Forest Health Partnership. And I'm not sure, if, have you seen some of these documents from Town Long? I haven't seen them. I'll, I'll leave these copies here. Dan gave us the designs, yes, yeah. but I can get some more for next time. The other piece is that Price Hadley, our ranger of the Button Rock, um, on top of doing all the rain drain, all the managing of the water, he's been working on all these grants and working on um, trying to make sure we stay involved and engaged. In so if we want more detail on some of these pieces, Price can come back in, but he's actually out this week, so I'm trying to get a little bit higher level. You know, this, so that partnership becomes that really more local focus on um, that Button Rock fire shed is Left Hand Water um, Shed Center, Boulder County, U.S. Forest Service, USDA, St. Brain Left Hand Water Conservancy District, Left Hand Water, um, Longmont and Boulder Valley Soil Conservation Districts, Longmont, and the Colorado State Forest Service. So in that partnership, it really was the ability to go out and look for grants, looking at things, because when you're looking at things on a property scale, it's hard to really accomplish things. So if you can look at the fact and say, we can do a forestry project that's going to include the Forest Service, Boulder County, and Longmont, and it's going to be 400 acre project and we don't care about what boundary lines are we care about protecting the, uh, the, the forest and the water health um, that's the reason we want to be the place to take advantage of those dollars up and help these watersheds um, so we got that put in place and we have i think four um, separate igas coming into place when we work with these different agencies but in the meantime we actually put in for a grant to do it which was 440 acres of forestry up around Button Rock, and that was a winning grant, so I just got that last week. So we will have a, a project that we'll be doing over 400 acres of the Button Rock to try to mitigate um, some of the high impact fire areas which really can turn that, that catastrophic fire. One of the grants that we received was through COSWAP, and I'll have to look that up, the Colorado Alliance of some sort that allowed us to get um, we have Youth Corps from Boulder County, but we also have more of an AmeriCorps from Larimer County. So our Youth Corps um, is a great program, gets kids out in, the, in nature, they learn about a lot of the things they're working on, we get some good trail work, hand tool work with them, but they can't step on a ladder, they can't do things that have power tools. The Larimer County crew is able to do actual forestry work with chainsaws, so we'll be able to get some additional work done um, from that group of young people too. So um, a lot of really good things coming out of this um, collaboration. Um, from Boulder County Commissioners to City Council to the Forest Service um, along the front range, that Button Rock area really has risen to the top as an area that um, we really need to do more for our forest health, our watershed, our visitor experience, and for a wildlife up there. And 
again, I think the last thing was that there were a couple of um, ways you can get online and register for some events that we talked about people doing this work. And we wanted, um, but not unfortunately was June 7th. Um, the next one coming up is in Raymond, and that's going to be July 19th. Old Stage, Lee Hill, Left Hand Canyon on August 9th, and then Pineless Springs being out on August 18th. And we just include those in the notes and minutes so that as you want to log on and kind of look at this a little bit. Um, that's really a nice thing about this collaborative because it, it really is all those municipalities, communities um, that are really interested in helping protect this forest have really gained a lot of voice by doing this. So I would just add, there's also, so this larger uh, St. Graham Forest Health Partnership, they put together a story map that's pretty cool online. We can make sure that we send out the link. It kind of just talks about the purposes of the whole partnership, what kind of forest work they're doing. And then working with the US Forest Service, um, they've actually, so this collaborative is looking at work on Forest Service land as well as associated jurisdictions. And for the Forest Service, all of these different partners are helping them with a, it's called a NEPA um, analysis, National Environmental Policy Act. Um, and so they have a proposal for projects throughout their whole partnership area that is open for public comment from June 8th to July 8th. And so I wanted to make sure that you all knew about that and could take a look at it if you wanted to provide public comment because it will have relevance to the Forest Service lands in our watershed. And I appreciate saying that because there's, there's so many pieces to this and it really could be something that's been a, if we have a price or can't use some doctor to uh, do a little bit more of this. But, Joint Chiefs, really, the um, Chiefs of the Forest Service, USDA, um, they really came out to say we want to do more, but we recognize we come in at the top level chiefs of these divisions, you come into a small community say, we're here to help you and we're going to clear this forest, and we're going to do some prescribed burns, and we're going to um, make the forest look different and be more help be healthier. Um, they get a lot of pushback on that, especially mountain communities. So what they have really done with this is trying to do more bottom up. They're really trying to re reach out to those James Towns and those wards and Longmonts and Lions so that they can build that grassroots piece and say, here's projects that we'd like to see in our community in collaboration with the Forest Service. Can you help fund that? And as opposed to we're coming with dollars and we're going to do a project in your backyard. So that's a little bit of how this, this really got set up. I think they've learned some lessons up around Gold Hill. So will there be volunteer? Uh, opportunities with this? That's a good question. I'm not sure um, in this if there will be. My thing is every time, I actually think in terms of past the Taylor's office, so I don't go past it, because every time I go past it, I have a new idea for her for another volunteer project. <laughs> okay. um, so I, I try um, to give her a little bit of room, but um, that's one of the things that, as I told you, walking through the day, it's going to help myself sit down and just chat it and say, you know, kind of where do you see this program in five years? She's got some great ideas. I mean, even Middle schoolers can build slot files. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so somebody else has to have two slot files, or even um, collecting for sale the firewood. Yeah, and that's to say a great piece too. One of the collaborations we have with going to council out these these four is that for years we've been, you know, Longmont the Forest Service, Longmont and Boulder County all sit there and we have some of these challenges. You know, we can go into Mega Spot and we can do the the forest work. We can build a slash pile, but again. Some, with slash piles, you're really just rearranging fuels unless you get a chance to burn those. In some of those areas, it gets very challenging to how do you mitigate if that fire gets out of control. So the best thing to do is get that wood out of there. And that really means going across another landowner's property. So we will be collaborating with Boulder County to use some of their access roads to take it out on Hall Ranch, and they will use that part as their, their firewood um, sale project then too. So um, some of those, the volunteers are working fire, this has really done a lot of really positive things pretty quickly in how we're working with our neighbors and our tenants. Um, I'm that note. One of the things we're really looking for with Boulder County is they do need to have that area of man so that people come up to buy fire or they have a permit. How we're doing that so it's going to be a place where we're looking for some additional help is how we, we man that firewood deck up there. Good ideas. Yeah, look at Look at Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
other questions? Any questions? Thank you. You want to take those two times to pass them down? Yeah, I will. Talk about the field trip. We amended it and then I forgot. You can bring that under items for the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's just. We can talk about it now. Right. Yeah. Let's just go back and talk about it now and then we can go to items and stuff. So, field trip. Those of you that have been on the board, well, because many of you, only Dan and I, I think, remember the old field trips, but we did do a field trip last last year. We had um, yes. a male a new park with us at the time, and I also not remember what it was. Um, and we did sort of a looking at some of the connectivity. We went to Dickens and looked at some of the um, other areas of the work done. So, you know, I think it's generally a good opportunity to get out and see some of the things that we talk about regularly. And before I started the board, the last field trip was maybe at Button Rock, but I didn't go cool. on that one. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Nice. So is there any ideas of people, what people would like to see? I'm thinking of going to Button Rock tomorrow if anyone wants to go on field trip. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to that. Not the retreat, this is the field trip. No, this is just Steve's not here, but I'm curious about all the various parks that are under construction, are about to be just finished. I mean, we've talked about them and and picturing I can't even say all the names, the one by Longmont High 
Stephen Day has done, but that trail out to Union Res. Yeah. You know, we've just discussed these various things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's uh, the one that's going to be south of the rec center. Maybe there's nothing oh. to see there yet. Did we go there? Yeah. Oh, I, I missed that. Field. I was yeah. on last year. At this point, it was the field. Okay. Right. So, <coughs> you know, Gallo is. That's the one I was thinking yeah. of, but I, for, I didn't realize you guys went there last year. Never mind. And then Lou Miller is the one that I want to have. Yep. I just, it says they're about to start. In right. The I just couldn't. It bring it too. Right. <laughs> well, and then the one that's um, by southwest most. Just east of 75th, I can't think of what it's Clover Meadow. Yeah, whatever that one that yeah. Steve talks about there. I mean, I know all of these are just getting going, or you know, maybe they're, maybe that's what we did last year. I missed the trip. I don't think do Clover Meadow. We didn't do Clover Meadow. Dry Creek is as far I think yeah, to the yeah. west as we went last year. So, um, but again, we're we're moving on that and making some decisions as well. For all right, it was just an idea. I think it was you, Jeff, that actually, I think you were joking that I think it's interesting that we, the idea that we visit like other recreation I wasn't centers. Joking. I wasn't joking because I was talking about like Apex, you know, is the one in our body that's combined so many really cool things. And it sounded like that was the direction we were sort of maybe expecting to be going. That was, that was joking in a real way. Right, right. Uh -huh. Jeff, do we have any idea what they pay tax wise for Apex? Or have paid, or that's yeah. something we could find out. Yep. Pardon? <laughs> but it, I mean, it's publicly funded. It's not a private. You know, it's like go down there and play tennis, and it's what a facility. Yeah. I mean, it's two different things. There's a tennis thing, and then there's the rec center. Well, it's like two miles room. apart. Yeah. 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 And, and it's a skate park thing around the corner too. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it must be big money. I'm just curious what it is, and what the or maybe. It, what the district size is, you know, how many people are we talking that pay for that or get to use it or I'm always have to be careful about which thing I put in Google because I'll end up at the wrong right. place. Jeff, if you're gonna if you're gonna follow up with our that, mm -hmm. just building on Dan's question about the size, because I know that's a rec district. Yep. Yeah. All right, the, the, oh, the, gotcha. the footprint uh, and if there's more information you can get, like assess valuation, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that they're they're funding that with maybe sales tax, whatever, however it's being funded. But I know Arvada has uh, a number of special districts. I think they have a fire district, a public safety district, um, very differently than how Longmont has approached these things. But this uh, quality of life tax, if it it's like this could look a lot more like Arvada than, than Longmont over the next half decade or so. So, you know, going down on some of Dan's interest would be helpful. Okay. Jeff presented the quality of life before you arrived, so we're now coming up to speed with your discussions. I believe the golden there's also a big bad. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That. I mean, it was 20 years ago, but it was still people that you know, there was like a really huge time down like filing tickets that I saw. Public or private? It's public. Oh, it's okay. a um, South Suburban, and it's like huge facility. They've got it's, like it comes from the indoor, indoor soccer, they've got hockey, they've got tennis, they've got like a rec center, they've got a bar. <laughs> So if we get a helicopter for this, yeah, for <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be more. Yeah, that would be a long field trip. That will have to come out of the parks, but yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> David, okay. you're on it. So I think we do maybe. I think we're we're still sort of talking about this lightly, but I do think there is some interest. So it might be good if we could at least get some more background, starting you know maybe with our data or if there are others that well, we think are similar. Did Carbon Valley just build one, or the finishing it? A new rock center? Yeah. No, they just approved. No, it failed. Oh, it failed. Yeah. Murphy did a new one. Murphy did a new one. Yes. But that'll be part of whatever RFP, I mean, whatever consultant right. we hire will, I mean, I remember last time, they generate all the, 
both competition slash, you know, Service comparative, yeah. you know. Like you versus just, Epic or Carbon Valley or Lafayette or you know the ones around here. Yeah. yeah. Any other thoughts on potential field trips? I mean, I heard talking about the parks that, like, up, you know, maybe visiting the parks that have been recently upgraded or near completion. That's another sort of more traditional field trip idea. I'd be interested in letting off as well, but. We always hear about how great it was, and I also wish I, I, I don't yeah. even know where to start. I want to go, and I'm like, I wish I knew more. So I would well, we can definitely put that on the list. Is that the place uh, city spend most of the money at Button Most of the most of the money is spent on the Button What money? I mean, you? the money allocated to the parks. The most of the money goes to Button Oh no. no. That's where this is. Before a lot is there a dam expansion up there? Those are dam expansions. Was there? No, is it? Oh, I know about the Gross Reservoir. Yeah, Gross. Gross has it. So I, I think you know the the city of Longmont has a decree that at some point there could be an expansion up there. Um, reality of that happening. Um, those permitting processes are decades long, so I don't know when that will happen. I think when, you know, the city participated in the Windy Gap, Jimmy Hollow project, I think that was, you know, the route that was chosen to really try to achieve the water needs of the city for, you know, the next kind of growth period for the, the near term. But there, there is a right up there that, that that reservoir could be expanded at some point. But Union Res it is supposed to expand, and we have done lots of things out there. That's another possible idea for uh, unless that's where you guys went last year, Agnes. No, because we we're now you know we changed the hours. You the that trail that I can't think. Spring Gulch, Spring Gulch goes. I mean, I, maybe there's something there. I don't know. Uh, worth our time. Okay. I'm not sure. Well, it's, again, there's a trail. It's, it's yeah. Okay. Well, eventually all the way around, right? But that's. Is that part of the expansion or previous to the expansion? So there will be two or, phases on that. Part of the expansion, what we call the J Trail, that kind of go up uh, along head towards the north and go up towards the Jim Ham area, then come down and go around towards the Sail Club on area. On the west side. Yeah, so on the west side, up that way, then kind of loop down the bottom and go up towards the Sail Club's at. And then the long term plan that's been approved is, is the full loop around the, the reservoir. And then over to St. Brady, right? So there's potential from, so Spring Gulch. Spring Gulch can get you down into Sandstone. Sandstone is on the final phase of that one. But then as you go from Union Reservoir going straight east along Pine Road 26, that is now all city owned property out until you, you get to the um, Adam Dairy, which we're in the process of working on closing that deal right now, that will get you out to safe part on that side too. So it'll be a, a loop up on that side as well. So yes. Interesting. And Spring Gulch is still, the expansion isn't happening yet. Do we own the land or have a... For Spring Gulch? Down, down to, to, yeah, down to Sandstone. In the CIP or proposed for yes, the so that, that, that is that is in the next phase. It's actually yeah. not in Steve or Kathy's queue on that one. That is actually an engineering. We're trying to get ah. projects you know, moving where we have some capacity. So that next phase is going through Jim Angstead's and the engineering group, but that is proposed the next year here. So, okay, thanks. So I have captured so four potential ideas. One would be Button Rock. I think we could look at forest management, water management, recreation impacts. Um, a second would be visiting parks that have either been recently revitalized, which is what Kathy does, or new parks that are near completion and are in development. And I don't know, maybe we could combine that with Union Reservoir, or I don't know, maybe Union and that whole connectivity would be its own. So maybe that's three, and then four would be some kind of visit to Argata or somewhere else to kind of compare. I think this is something that we can't do on our own. Does that make sense? So I can always go to the Apex Center on my own. But if we were going to go to Apex Center, which I think it's valuable, 
I want to see a side of it and talk to people. Um, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, does that make sense? I, I don't need to go to all the parks because I already do. You know what I mean? But I need to go to the parks with like the eye of something. So I'd like to see something that we can't do on our own. Because I feel like as a, a committee, we should be making an effort to get to a park once a month or something. Like this. So any, any preferences? I mean, I can offer all of these to it feels Steve, like the APEX idea is a little early, you know, based on what's the timeline of everything we heard, it feels like that could happen in the future. We could start getting some information that maybe. I don't think we're anywhere near designing the rec center at this point. Are we looking for the whole day or half day? Usually, I think it's half day. Half day. Half day. Okay. Five to eight. Yeah. That's how it was instead of our meeting, I think. Was that one yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, what I thought, like, last year, and this might be the only one I went to, I've gone to, it, it was valuable that even though we can go to these places, it was, I think it was valuable for, like, Steve to go through and say, hey, St. Brain's property is over here, and we have to work with them, and then this is the neighborhood, and this is what the neighborhood wants, when you just talk about, you know, Gallup. It just, it up, I just like, it's, it's been there for 10 years. Why don't we have a park here? It's like, well, we've got all these parts moving. Is all these other players that are involved. Then you go to another place, and you have that same discussion. Like you have to wait until we acquire something, and then there's this whole other thing. You kind of put more of these areas in context. Your point is that you have the expert there. You're, yeah. you're getting more than yeah. just here. Here's a park, right? That's right. just yeah. That's right. what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like maybe the sort of Union Reservoir combined with what that sort of larger build-out plan is for building connectivity to the park. And we do have to talk to Danielle because we do have, we're down to our final um, couple options we'll be taking out to the, the public for the final connection from Sandstone Ranch out to the state park. Yeah. Um, that's an area that you know people don't get to, we probably get out to that area and let this group look at that so we can do that. And I asked about that a month or two and you said, no, I can't go there. Yeah, you can't go there, but we can get you there. <laughs> uh, that's exactly. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I want. Yeah, yeah that's something what, that we can't do on our own. Right. We're like, you know. And then we can maybe come up on the by the new Adam Dairy to kind of talk about how it fit into the kind of that northern loop if we are able to make that happen as well. We'll wear good shoes. Very good. <laughs> Bring a bike. I would be interested in that. The union is a very combo. Yeah, east side stuff. We've been talking about that a lot yeah, over the okay. past year. I mean, that's like between this group and Dan Wolford, you know, open space, right. like, that all has come into play a lot. Yeah, and you can see how the Spring Gulch, like, well, phase two just got ends. You know, yes. see where phase three will go out and underneath the railroad drive. It's, I mean, it's gone under 119 for. 15 years and gone nowhere. You know, you just go under it. Oh, I can move back up onto the highway. <laughs> right. So now the harder question is, but do you, I guess we could do instead of our meeting, we need to do it sooner rather than later because we are, peak light is this meeting. Right. So next meeting. I think we did it in September. August, September. Last August or September. Yeah. yeah. Was, I think we ended about eight o'clock. So Actually, August it was my anniversary last year, August twelfth, because I remember I left early. <laughs> oh yeah. August eighth. That would be hard. <laughs> it was easy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not hard. arguing. I'm August saying no, no argument. August eighth. Yeah. yeah. That's the Correct. second Monday in August. Gotcha. Are we good? I'll be getting the last. I'll be going to the last. Yes. We may have a whole other meeting. No, it sounded yeah. like we aren't going to. Yeah. So. No. August 8th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's. Pending conversation with staff. Okay. Let's just say tentatively August 8th. Good. Good. That works. Yeah. I'll work with Dan and Danielle and. Um, Yeah, we'll just do that. Steve, engineer, yeah, there's, there's a lot of pieces to look at. It'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no. Items from staff. Any other items? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Items from the board? 
question? No. Okay. I have a few, believe it or not. You want to go first? I have answered your question. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm going to say. You didn't ask yet. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask my it question. was vandalism slash misuse. It was people probably too large, adult, you said everyone liked using those. What happens when you get that larger weight on it, it slams in the other end and stops quick, so the wheels were damaged, so we have the new wheels on order. So okay, was, so it is going to be... It will be fun. fixed, and I don't know how we keep it from happening yeah. again, but... Um, it's just a major element of the whole park, so it seems like if we invested in that design, we need to be prepared to maintain it. Yeah. It's the biggest thing there. Exactly, yeah. Okay. I got so many other questions though now. Oh, okay. All right. Can I, can I yeah. ask? So uh, my first one is random. These are all Jeff random questions. I noticed just now when I was investigating Button Rock that it claims that you can enter the park at 3 a.m. And I'm curious, is that really true? And if so, why is that so different from all these other hours for all the other persons? So, Button Rock is a unique property. It's, it's a water, it's works with water funds. It's really considered, we mentioned all those other parks, and Ken Houston would be the first to tell you it is not a park, it's a preserve. So we, we really purchased that property to store water on, but knowing in that area, we have that unique foothills ecosystem. I mostly want to know who goes at 3 a.m. So, exactly, so that's exactly it. One of the reasons that we've really done a master plan, there's a lot of historical uses up there. We're trying to make sure that we can accommodate that, make sure we meet the needs of the wildlife and the preserve and the water quality up there. And that was Ken Houston's always piece. If people wanted to get up and be fishing on the backside of the reservoir at 6 a.m. when the sun came up or at 5, you'd have to be moving in like at three o'clock from down below to, to be up there. So that was one of the reasons that um, we did not have the same hours on that that property as we did with the, the parks in town. I wasn't trying for a gotcha, I was just shocked yeah, but, that people go at 3 a.m. Yeah, it really was. And the real thing is you actually, and we will be working long term on some better ways of doing this, but um, you can start up at Johnny Park and you can hike down and through and into Lions actually. Actually you could do, come down through, go up Sleepy Line and go into Hall Ranch. So. There's a lot of people that do camping at Forest Service and they're moving through and stuff, so there's, there's it's it's trying to make that ability. Johnny Park down to the lake and back. Just did that last oh, Tuesday. Well, it's actually Colson Gulch. Colson Gulch, yeah. Colson Gulch. How long? It was a seven and a half mile round trip to the lake. So my other question, actually, Dave and I already emailed about this, but I, it, it was interesting enough that I thought I'd bring it up, which is I have a colleague at work who lives near McIntosh Lake who said, hey, Jeff, I know you're on the board. Tell me when McIntosh Lake is going to get filled because I want to use it and the water's too low. And so I emailed David and asked, and you put me in touch with Ken and gave me information I'd never even thought about, which I thought maybe the board would be interested in. And I looked online and couldn't find it, but the short version was I had no idea that there was this prioritization process of what gets filled when, it's based on when it joined the system, and you got I thought that was super cool, yeah. and I knew nothing about it, I'm just saying, hey, guys, this is cool, if you don't know about it, because I just have this long email that has, like, listing of 1910 when we took on Macintosh, <laughs> and the week before we apparently took on Union, so Union's before Macintosh. Yep. So is that you, online? Sorry to interrupt. I'm not sure that there's that much detail online, but you know, Ken Houston and Wes, they love doing stuff. We want a presentation. And really what that is is prior appropriations. Where are you from, Jeff, originally? Are you from? I grew up in Dallas. In Dallas. Dallas, Dallas. Texas. And I'm from Michigan. So in Michigan, we have, it's called Spring Hill Farms, and we try to get water off our farm all the time. Um, <laughs> in Colorado, it's how you get water on it, and every drop of water is really owned by somebody, and they have a right to that, first in time, first in right. And... Yes, if you have a priority, you can have water coming right past your reservoir and your farm. If someone downstream has a older right on that water, you just have to watch that water go by. And by the time you get the priority, it may have all dried up and there's no water coming down. So you could watch lots of water go by and not have an opportunity to take, take that. Macintosh is pretty low on that. Yep. Um, however, just today, we actually had our meeting uh, because of this really warm weather. This, Unfortunately, the snow is melting out really fast. I mean, those those are those snow packs up in the mountains are our biggest reservoirs, and people sometimes don't realize that. Those are our biggest reservoirs. And when they melt out fast, we get a lot of water coming down. Highland Ditch up in Lyons is the one that divert, they can sweep the whole creek. You can actually have water coming down the creek, and Highland Ditch can take it out until they fill their reservoirs. Um, we actually didn't think we were gonna fill Button Rock. We didn't think we were gonna fill Union. And we definitely think we're gonna get anything into Macintosh. This last weekend we filled Button Rock, Button Rock is spilling, and we're 
starting to fill Union. So we may get some water into Macintosh, but it's a really complex system. We have some amazing water resources, people that keep track of all that. Yeah. We work with the state every day and talk about price in the forest piece. He's on the phone every day, him and our miles with the state engineer saying, who's calling for water? How much are we letting out? How much can we keep in and where is it going? And it sounded very interesting and I wanted to share. So if, if that's something that the group would like to hear a bit more to see on half hour, I don't think it can do a half hour presentation, but if <laughs> half hour, a half hour presentation, we could probably do something on it. Because it really does impact our parks um, and how we do our raw. Well, one thing to see is really committed to is using raw water to irrigate our parks. So when we build new parks, you talk to see we use bottles of building a pond so we can pump out of that pond, store that water, and then use it for um, irrigating your parks. I also, I mean, I, I think the fact that some random person asked me this means that there may be more people in the public who wish they understood it also. So maybe it would be worth some level of communication about that kind of stuff online okay. so people can understand it. For what it's worth, I interviewed uh, Ken Houston and Gail Rademacher and the general manager of Northern Water, the two-part series uh, that's available if you want to. I mean, it's, it is not it's, online. It, it's on YouTube. Really? Um, under the backstory. Um, oh. But it, we set it up when the, when the emergency declaration occurred on the lower Colorado Basin, assuming that there'd be a fair amount of public interest in it. God, what does that mean for us? Um, and that interest hasn't really materialized. <laughs> but it's a, How do we find it? What the I, I, I can just video. send you this. Send okay. me an email and okay. I'll send you the link. Okay, so. I would like or to say it too. Maybe they can send yeah, it out to all of us. Well, yes. oh, maybe we could just have it out to and we have pop up. <laughs> uh, or I'll, you know, I, uh, I'll send it to the chair. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I just think it's interesting. The well, color of water loss yeah. is unbelievably interesting and crazy. And, and, and complicated. And complicated. I, it, was, and it needs to be revised if it's so big as it is. The thing that Ken gave me was really cool because it showed the percentage of fill of everything and it showed the hierarchy of everything. So what really helps is going into the museum and doing the thing, but they should revise it for water law. They should have an advanced version of water law. And say, uh, Soink! You can't take that water, you know. And I know I said I wanted to leave early, but I got one other thing too. Can I keep going? Are there people that have been doing it? I feel like I've challenged I've only got one thing. I'm just going to do it. Do it. Um, so that just a question for, for David. The, um, uh, the D, like we talked forever ago about the DDA and the Rangers having authority or not having authority in the DDA, and I don't know where that went. The question just came up today from from high school people on the dismount zones and um, uh, Longmont Downtown Development Authority. Um, for the, and so, since I, you were going to be here, yep. that would be easier than the sixth or third. You mean yeah. like our main? Right. Yeah. So their authority really. Is in, in public lands. We met those public lands two years ago may have been. Um, we included the breezeways and some of those little parks by the church and stuff down there included in public lands. So as rangers are doing a patrol on a bike and they're moving from Collier Park and they're going to Roosevelt and they come through those those breezeways, a lot of people that um, we meet and have conversations with that are camping along the creek or bad behaviors in the in the restrooms or camping in the in the breezeways. It allows us to have some sort of continuity in how we're contacting with people how we're talking to them. So it really is a piece we worked with the the DDA on how we could make that more um, a part of what the rangers were doing. But it really does end there. We haven't figured out a way to do the sidewalks up front. Um, so Kimberly I think is working on getting an ambassador out there. I think it's one of the things that again if a ranger is down that area and someone's riding their bike down the street and anyone can you know, give a warning or a conversation or ask, and being in uniform could maybe help with that. It's just, I don't know the probability of that happening. Really, but we, we will not be out there patrolling that area because it really is not a part of their, the area they have jurisdiction over. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, this is awesome. uh, the dry creek, uh, there were four containers earlier for the cash. Now there's only two for this last two weeks. Yeah. So um, I got some thanks to YouTube, David, and 
um, about the tennis and pickleball. It sounds like you guys had meetings. It was civil, deaf, and you know, they they feel positive. Like, oh, we're going to be able to make some compromises. So whatever you said was goodness. Well, we haven't brought the two groups together. Ah, well, they, <laughs> they have met with. Some Jeez. pickleball folks. Okay, we met with LTA. pickleball folks and we met with uh, um, LTA folks. Well, I got the impression LTA and pickleball did talk separately from you two then. Oh, okay. That's the impression. That's even better. Yeah, I, that's the impression I got. Okay. Anyway, uh, and I also got positive feedback from several people about the new backboard at Car Park. In yeah. fact, Patsy, the woman who came talk to us, was that a year and a half ago? Yep. She uh, bought donuts and drinks for the guys who were installing it. Oh, yeah. day, yeah. She was so appreciative. Um, but I got lots of complaints because of the heat about no shade at quail. We had two years ago, I want to, you know, those sale things. I wonder if that could happen again or if there's budget for that. You know what I mean? Just those triangly canvassy, it just, you know, I think the water goes through, but it, you know, the sun gets dappled underneath because it's, you know, the leagues, there's, you know, 20 people plus, you know, from teams there. I'm th you know, between the two courts and the back side, you guys had stuff strung. Or maybe LTA did it. I was going to say, I guess exactly. I just asked Somebody, well, well, is that something you can do? I mean, yeah. I keep asking about a shelter. Right. That's not that's happening that's anytime soon. Right. But this, maybe this is something we in turn yeah. can do. I don't know. I mean, those uh, nice windscreens, are they all back up? I guess in the winter when we don't have them, that's when we don't need, nah, that's the problem. We need them all at the same time. I was thinking if we could right. talk, you know, share, but that doesn't work. You need the windscreens in the summer and you need the uh, overhead. So, that's mine. I got more. Okay. And they relate to Dan. Um, I'm looking at the website that I wanted to learn more about button rock again, and I noticed it doesn't completely make sense to me, so I just want to clarify there are things on here that, in the parks, open space, and trail section of the Walmart Colorado Gov website, it lists button rock, and then right below it says like disc golf, and then it says dog parks, and then it says pickleball courts, but it never mentions tennis courts, and it never mentions basketball courts, it never mentions like roller hockey and I think it seems really random and I guess I'm just wondering is there a different place where someone would learn about the resources that someone in the city of Longmont could go so to? Where are you at? I'm on this Longmont Colorado website directory of parks and trails and that's why it's strange that pickleball is in there first for the first place really. So you can I think one thing's in and this is a piece where we have to interface with other right, people. Right, you're not making the website. Right, saying. we work with that, but I think there's a spot on there because I was went through this other day. Um, you should be able to filter those. So that way, what it allows you to do, you can go to a park that has pickleball courts. You can okay. go to a park that has tennis courts, and that's what it should be able to allow you to do by having. So maybe that's just another part of the website, but this is just seems weird because I was expecting things like button rock, right? And then I found pickleball, and I was like, well, the tennis isn't there. It just seems odd that we'd be listing some of our resources, but not all of them in that. Now, there, there are, each park is listed separately with the amenities and that it has. This must be a different section, because this is more focused on parks, open space, and trails. That's why it's strange to pick them all there. It is. Um, and one of the things I think is you look at websites, one is keeping them up to date on the new stuff, <laughs> right. getting rid of stuff right. as it becomes irrelevant so no I, again it's fine i was just surprised to see all that and thought that was weird i find that there are a number of i mean i know it's not your department <laughs> but aspects of the city website that are not very user friendly well they, they had an rfp out for a marketing manager and a website manager <laughs> quite some time so anyway yeah, yes. we ought, i understand we offered a job and the person ended up turning it down oh really yeah. I can get that good magic. So I've had people talk to me, ask me about the dark sky areas in Longmont and where there could be dark sky areas and if there is it a chance of having dark sky uh, like city blackouts during migration periods. Uh, birds, um, 
Does anybody know if there's a dark place in Longmont? But not a person Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that, yeah, that's. I mean, that might be, yeah, like sandstone, they've asked like sandstone, things like that. In fact, we're, I was talking in the museum about, you know, doing an astronomy program. There's, like, what it needs to be within the city, and the sandstone has, unfortunately, the sugar mills just, I mean, you can see the sugar mill five miles, like the, the lights blocked in five miles away. And things definitely have wrapped around there. I, I, that union, if you start looking at the open space program is done, basically from Conway Road, Union Reservoir to all those water properties for expansion, the open space, out to basically need high school. Um, that's going to be a while, but again, the areas we can protect out there, those are going to become subdivisions to the north of those properties too. Okay, so Union right now would be a dark, a dark but, first type. But that's right. I'm, so, that's, so many overhead lights at Union. Yeah. The reason that's the reason I didn't really jump and say this is a spot because I'm not sure what the definition of a dark sky is because again I. The, the place with probably the most or the least amount of lights can be out around that area if you kind of go out along those those count those city owned properties out in low in low county. What do you mean to like own ponds? You know that that up that near like the west end or the yeah, south west west. End, you're almost the, almost like you can't get the public. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah there's that neighborhood right by it and then up like the yeah, south of the first I'll check them out. I mean so, there's, there's some open space the, areas that are, you know, but that's Willow County, St. Gray State Park. Is that too close to that? Yeah, the highway is just. That's the city parks. Yeah, it's like. Is this a group you're working with that could get it? I mean, the piece that's going to remind you again, hours, if it's one hour after sunset or if it's 11 o'clock, that we just need to make sure that if it's a group be permitted to be able to use the Yeah, the and then people just also want to know just because they want to, I mean, there's that, that people just want to know if there's a, a dark sky place that they can just go see, like the Perseids or whatever. Um, and right now, you know, it doesn't seem to be. Um, and then I, people have talked about the, the migration paths you know, that are affected by light and I don't know, the, the idea that maybe the city could shut off the lights. Shut off the lights. Twice a year, you know, it'd be kind of cool actually, but I doubt it's going to happen. But so, good ideas. Yeah. Check them out. I know yeah. that there's a, yeah, a museum we're talking about, an like astronomer that would be a, a cool to do an astronomy program. That needs to be like and then, frog trapping. It's the other thing I had a question mark. How's the frog trapping going? The bullfrog trapping? You know, I don't know if I have an update on that <laughs> recently, but I think it's going fairly well. I mean, that, that's that been a significant piece of what Scott and his group have been trying to do to protect our, our native frogs. Well, so I personally wish it wasn't happening by the <laughs> museum because I take kids out to catch frogs there, and that's their nature experience. And there are no frogs to catch anymore. It's a little bummer. But there are, there's a vernal pond right by there of native frogs that's pretty nearby that is slated for development. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And um, I brought it up to city, to individuals, like Marsha okay. Martin, I brought it up to her. Where is that at? By, over by the museum? Yeah, it's um, north and west of the museum. There's a vernal pond. And there should be, right now as we speak, there should be frogs. I haven't looked this year, but it's every year. On the city property, though? Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's going to be a hotel, I think. You know, that it's going to be a road that goes uh, through all that. Yeah. It's going to be a hotel or a road. Yeah. But, yeah. but that require mitigation? I mean, that's, that, what, that's why I made my note here is that we need to. If there is a wetland there, if there's... So who do I send the pictures of those frogs to that I go to next week with kids and they see that? Like, cause that's, I, I've sent them to Colorado Parks and Wildlife and lots of, it's, it's native frogs, they're not bullfrog. So send them to me and I'll get them to, so um, Scott Sievers is my wildlife biologist would be the best person to give that to you. Who's Scott Sievers? The animal you did the beaver deceiver? Yep. 
Yeah. So Scott Sievers, Jim Crick, Dan Wolford, myself. If you just want to send it to the act, make sure it gets the right people. But if you want the names. Yeah, if you go two weeks later, you don't even know there's a pond there. Right. It's kind of interesting. I'm just wondering since Mr. Waters wasn't here when we had the point where we wished he was here, should we circle back and tell them what people from this group were thinking about the combining of Rec Center, do we want to say that? I'm I'd, I'd be delighted to hear. I apologize. Again. We wished he was here, and now he's here, so I'm just yeah, mentioning Yeah, I was going to go back to that when we were done with Sorry. the items from okay. before, but yeah. Is that <laughs> Any other items on the floor? Okay. Great. Well, Some I more. think we would also love to hear, so Jeff gave us the overview of what was being proposed and what was in them, um, or potentially to be evaluated from the quality of life tax, and folks on the board had some questions, particularly about the inclusion of performing arts, which might be sort of a different animal than the other things, and could potentially be a bit challenging for the overall approach, and we all acknowledge that just, that was... Is this property versus sales right, taxes property versus sales. Basic so questions. it was just a general overview. So I would welcome anything else you might want to add from your perspective from uh, council. I don't know that I have a whole lot more perspective to offer. Uh, if you heard it from Jeff or, or David, I'm certainly heard the authoritative word on this. Um, uh, we had two feasibility studies that uh, occurred in the last 36 months, right? One on the Department Arts Center, one on the library. Both uh, came to the library and the fans of the performing arts or members of our performing arts community are anxious to move beyond the feasibility study to something, right? That would, that would result in a uh, 21st century library, a performing arts and conference center. Uh, the museum uh, has been working with consultant. They've done an assessment of what you know, where we should go with, with, with expansion of the museum. Um, the, the, it's, it's no surprise that there's growing enthusiasm in our recreation community to revisit the, the, what drove us to a ballot question that failed back in 2018. Right? The need has any less today than it was then. The, the challenge is, uh, what's the appetite for the, the, the amenities that would come out of this in, among our voters? How elastic is the tax base? And if you if you go at this with, with individual questions, four or five questions on a ballot, what are the chances that any one of them pass? And the concern is that you you pit groups against one another, and that you get lose winners and losers, right? And and, uh, and people are going to advocate at the expense of other other ideas or other opportunities. That's that's the worst fear. Right. The best hope would be, of course, that if you put four or five ballot questions on, you can sell to the community and they all pass. But we couldn't do that with one, the last, one question the last time. Right. It was badly, I mean, if you go back and you did an after action review on how that was handled, it's a long list of mistakes that we made. We made, we waited too long in the school district, the school district wasn't really, I don't think, behind it. I mean, there was a lot that was, we, framed it all wrong. Um, uh, so I, so there's no surprise we want to get back at that. I wish we'd done an after action review at the time. Um, and this is a judgment call. It's like, what, how do you go to get the politics in long run? Uh, how deep are taxpayers willing to go? And if you were to be, to be successful, the complications then with a special district that has all these different interests in it, and how do you then set priorities within the special district to make best use of the resources. And it, there are huge issues that the city will have to deal with. How we fund parks and rec now, or how we found rec, fund recreation now, how we fund the library, the museum. And we don't do much with you know, the, the arts community other than the arts in public places. Um, uh, I would assume that those resources would still be available for recreation for the museum, for the library, etc. So there's a fairly complex set of IGAs, intergovernmental inter -government agreements, I would guess. I've never created one of these, so I just 
can imagine what it's going to be like. But at the end of the day, the concern is if you go in the FS with individual questions, uh, you're going to end up losing four or five questions, or four of five questions, or whatever. Whoever marshals the, big, the best campaign at the expense of the of others. That's the future. Couldn't the fear also be that this thing failed and all five failed? Oh, absolutely. That seems like the biggest thing to me would be nothing happened. Yeah. Um, now, if you had your entire recreation community, and your arts community, and your library community, your friends in the library, all pulling in the same direction, sure. chances are you can pull it off. That's that's the best one. The other question that Dan just asked that I'll ask the way is, was the discussion about what kind of tax it would be, whether it be property yeah. versus um, and I and I, I there's some legal questions um, that I don't know that we have the answers to just yet. Uh, what are the options for mixing an ad valorem tax with a or property tax with a sales tax? And the same question. I don't know if we can do that. And I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've heard that question raised. I haven't heard our city attorney give a definitive response to that. So I don't know if you, if you can mix. That would be kind of cool, actually, because it would tax people that own property, but would actually tax use of people that are just visiting. Well, in, uh, that's the, 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 the rub on the sales tax, right? It, it's going to impact people who can least afford it for some of the things we tax. Can you get you get people who are who are traveling through Longmont a chance to share in the burden of servicing debt, sure. right? So. Um, but that, again, is a judgment call. I do think, um, I, I think if we move, as we, this is kind of tangential to it, but I do think the whole issue of what we, what we tax is a sales tax, like food. Uh, this is going to call that question. Uh, if we do something like this, I don't know that we could, we, could, we could add one more burden on those who are least able to afford to live in long run uh, without making an accommodation of some kind. And I think the sales tax on food is place to start. Be a bit of that. Yeah. Well, we just tax caviar and grape. Well, yeah. For the cheese and there's the idea of luxury tax, I mean, it, it, along with sales tax and property tax, and something that you would amp up the, the tax on luxury items. What's a luxury item? Well, automobiles and you know, things like that. So, but but those are there, those are legal questions that I don't have. I mean, it's an interesting idea. I, I'm not a marketing expert, but I would probably not call it quality of life tax for too long because I feel like that's, I mean, arts and activities district. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, something I think, especially with the inflation and gas, like quality of life tax seems here's, like here's both the, unnecessary and <coughs> challenging. This is, here, here will be a challenge among the many challenges. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a bunch of them. There's something called log rolling. Right, that, that, that uh, is prohibited from a, a municipality or a group of an elected body wanting to put a tax question on a ballot. You can't roll multiple initiatives into the same question. Right? So you got to frame the question large enough to accommodate, accomplish what it is you want to accomplish. So a couple of years ago, when we, when we passed the, uh, the, the dedicated sales tax for updating the, the uh, Civic Plaza, a Civic Center, the museum, and uh, fire stations, and the, you know, the Justice Center, right? uh, and the sprinkling system for golf courses. Um, we had to do that as three separate questions. Uh, and, and personally, I was just certain, I mean, I wanted all those to pass, but I thought the one that had the least chance of passing was going to be the recreation one. Um, fortunately, it passed, and I was I was lobbying to roll these all up into one question, and was told we can't because there's this law against log rolling, and that's what that would be. And we couldn't frame, or we didn't work hard enough to frame that question in ways that you could, roll, could put all those questions into one, all those initiatives into one ballot question. So it was new when I heard Harold talk about quality of life tax. It's the first time I've heard it referred to this way. We've been in this conversation kind of on the fly about what a, a, a special district might include. 
uh, cultural district or a civic district. Or, and, it, and then I heard quality of life district. Uh, and and I, I've got my own concerns about, about, the, about that label. Um, but I do think some, some marketing, some market research has to be done. To, yeah. It is kind of, you could walk into the same bus stop that you did with right. the exactly. competitive. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm worried about. <laughs> quality of life tax, I mean, if I really break it down, quality of life is what it's about. And that actually I've got, you know, we're all on board with giving us a good quality of life, but quality of life fund sounds right. better than quality of life tax. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there are marketing professionals. Fun fun. <laughs> <laughs> the fun fun. But I mean, I, again, I think it's an interesting it's idea fun. that I think, fun you fun. know, we learned from the cool and ice that language really matters in my life. And, but, I, you know, I would hate to see this fail because we framed it. Language and messaging is, yes. and yeah. can't, and who, who are your opinion leaders in town that you'd like to have on board? And I mean, there's so much work that needs to be done. It wasn't done, right, in the run-up to that. So, uh, I wish no, I had more information. No, that's Thanks. great. Thanks. I appreciate the update. Okay, anything? Anything else? Anything else on the agenda? Okay, now we could take a motion to adjourn. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thanks, Paige. Thank you.